Hello guys, welcome back. This is the fourth video in the chain lead series. In this video, I'm going to cover chat with CSV using Docker. So the app will be similar to chat with CSP, the last video, but we are going to use Docker in order to deploy that particular app. Why we are using Docker is because when we do the deployment in the Google Cloud Platform later in the fifth video, it will be using the Docker. So we are in that path. For that particular case, I'm going to use this Langchain Chainly Docker deployment repository. And I actually forked this particular repository from the original one. Let me go to this one. This is what I am always saying you that if you find some useful repository, we fork from that repository and use it for ourselves, right? So this is a template to run the Langchain Power app using Chainlit front end, right? And this is actually the contributors are Ma Raja and Harrison Chase. Harrison Chase is the co-founder of Langchain. So I find this particular repository, the legit one, and it is also in the chain lead documentation. So thank you, Ma Raja and Harrison Chase for creating this particular repository. All the instructions are in the readme file, but I have modified those because everything was there, but also not all the steps were mentioned. So I tried to modify that and make it user friendly. So anyone who is following this can follow each and every step, right? In this case, as I said before, we are just going through first step of this repository where we will be creating chat with CSV application and using Docker. As I'm going to explain you step by step because the Docker concept is new here and I want to show you how you can run the CSV file by using the OpenAI API key in the UI itself. The video is going to be a little bit long. Let's get started. As in our earlier video also, I'm going to replicate as if I was a new user like you, right? I have logged in with the basics data science account what i'm going to do first of course if i find this helpful i will give the star and then fork this particular repository right when i do the fork it is going to create a new one i will just say create fork as you can see i i forked from the original template and created the one and then now again i'm going to fork from that particular thing so this is how it actually works if the repository is quite useful right so in this repository also i am going to uh, follow all the instructions in the github code space i'm going to create a code space here so it will take some time here let's wait a little bit of the time okay now it is loaded here and the terminal is here it will probably take some time okay it's done and yeah there is the readme file right let me make this little bit smaller so yeah this is the readme file and this is how the int int result will look like where we can have the chat right similar to what we did last time and yeah again as similar with the last video it detected that there is python 3.10 so it is going to set up all the environment for us let's go through the readme file this repository is forked of course i mentioned this thank you maraza and harrison chase again the contributors of this repo so what are the features the chat with csp app configured with openai api key so you can get the api key from this particular link in this uh, video what i'm going to do is instead of providing my own api key in the dot env file we will ask users to input the API key in the UI itself. I will show you how to do that. We will be creating the QA chat, right? And we will containerize the app using Docker. So we will be following until this step in this particular video. And in the next video, we will be deploying this particular app in the GCP using the cloud run. How this works is this repo contains main.py file, right? So if you go inside the demo app there is this main.py if i click this there is this chat csp which we went last time right and if we go to the readme file so yeah this is the thing you need to follow if you are following this locally but we don't need to do this and we are going to use poetry for the environment variables 
poetry is really good when deploying the applications so we will be using poetry and for installing the poetry we need to have pip ex we can use pip ex install poetry right first make sure that we have poetry or not right so what we can do is poetry version so we don't have poetry right what i can do is just copy this but before that you need to have pip ex installed right if i do pip ex version there is the 1.2.0 ppx version right so now what we can do is just install poetry with ppx let me copy this Control c and if i go here and Control v i can now install poetry right when we install the poetry we can install all the necessary packages using the poetry install and that is how it works and we can run these two commands here okay the poetry is done right so let me just type poetry install poetry install so what it is going to do is create a virtual environment as you can see here where it finds all the packages to install is if you go to this poetry pyproject.toml file right so this is how the uh, the poetry works you can specify the necessary packages here and then it is going to be installed so you can change this as your wish so this is how it is going to work and now what I can do is run the next command called poetry sale right let me clear the screen poetry sale right so if I run this it says spawning sale within this and now you can see that there is the land chain chain lead docker template this so this means that this is the environment a virtual environment where everything is installed so just to see that i can run poetry env list it says dot venv activated right everything is set up now poetry sale is done now we can check if it runs or not right but before going through this i will just follow with this main.py right so this is the same app but here one thing what I said you before is we are using the environment variables so this is how you can load the environment variables if you want to use your own environment variables right already in the app but in chainlit we don't even need to do this but if we use this user env user session get env so this is what we need to provide in the app and if you go little bit down here you need to go here and provide this piece of the code so when we provide this piece of code and one more thing if you go to the dot chain lead there is config.toml file if you go here and by default let me close this by default here user env will be empty right here it says list of environment variables to be provided by each user to use the app right so here we need to provide open ai api key so this is the different than before first you need to provide this part of code here and then if you go to the main.py first you need to put this piece of code here and in this main function here you need to provide this piece of code when you do this then user must input their open ai api keys in the ui itself now let us run if it works or not before going to the docker part right so we can just copy this command go here and control v and if i run this it should run and provide us the ui right let's wait for some time in the local host it says that we can assess the app right so we can just click this and it is loading here so it must ask us as you can see here it asks now to provide the open ai api key you can just paste the open ai api key here for that you need to go to the platform.openai right so where you can go is platform.openai right you can go to this website go here create copy go back to the app this is the app we can paste it here and save right as you can see it is saved and it is saved locally so you no other people can view the api key now we can just drag the csv file and then do whatever we want right so this is how it works but this is the first part we run now 
what we need to do is let me go here we can just cancel this control c but now we will be implementing the main docker part right i'm showing you step by step so that you don't get confused right now we are going to the docker part so it's always a good idea to run the app without docker first and then go with the docker right now we run successfully without the docker same as last time but we want the user to input their own api keys right by the way don't mention in the comment that the api key is being exposed because i'm going to remove or revoke the api key once the video is being created so for the docker i'm not going to go through what is docker and all the different things but this project includes the docker file to run the app in the docker container right so we'll be using these two commands that's all we need to do we don't need any other things but for that we need to have the docker file so if you go to this part here docker file right so here so this is how it works from python 3.11 slim uh, slim buster as builder right so the builder image used to build the virtual environment so as you can see here first we are doing some random things here we install the poetry and there are some of the environment variables for poetry cache and all the different things and there is this host listen port and the expose port is 8000 and now the working directory is slash app right then we copy the pi project tomol file and log file here so you see here we have pi project tomol and the poetry dot log file as you can see here right and then here is the ron poetry install without dev so this is how you can run the poetry commands and now there is the runtime image right which is used to just run the code provided its virtual environment right there are many ways you can create the uh, docker image but this is how it is mostly used first you create the builder image and then you create the runtime image right so this is the same and here environment virtual e and v right and then you copy from builder virtual environment virtual environment then you copy the slash demo into the slash demo as you can see we have the demo app right and we copy the chain lead into the chain lead so this is the chain lead we need to copy that because we have this config file there and then the, we just copy the chain lead dot md file which is here right and then we run the command that is how we run this before also chain lead run this file right this is the command we need to provide in the docker file itself we save this what we need to do now is if you go here we have the two commands we are going to build the docker container here i can just copy this but before that you need to have docker installed in your system right in github code space there is already the docker if you don't have docker you need to go to docker website and download docker if you are running it locally right but we are doing it in github code space so we don't need to do that i can just control v so we are going to use the docker build kit in order to build the image right so i can just run enter so now it is going to build the docker image using the docker file mentioned here as you can see here we did so many things when we run the chain lead server before right but now everything is mentioned in the docker file so only two commands is needed in order to run that particular app so that is how you do things in the software development world these days first you test that the app is running properly and then you can ship it using the docker right it will take some time to build the particular image as you can see here it is following each and every step right okay now that is done right so what we can do is we can check if the docker image is created or not with the docker image command so if i run docker images it will show here that okay there is a docker image being created 17 seconds ago and the size is 321 mb right so now we know that our docker image is being created so in order to run it there are many ways but docker compose op is the easiest way to do i can just do control v and enter right now it is creating the network 
it is creating lang chain deployment here done attaching to this and it's done it says open in the browser instead of this what i'm going to do is just control and click this so now our app should be running as before now as you can see here it runs as before but now it does not ask us the api open ai api key because there is the, it is stored in our session right if it was run for the first time then it would not provide this but if you want to see what is your open ai api key you can go to this icon here there is this api key so this is the api key i pasted before right if i go to the api key i can confirm this from here the last let me see the last one it is mjxk right if i go here it is mjxk this is it is already being saved it is not asked us the open air api key but if you were not running the first command without the docker then you need to input the open air api key now we can just browse the files and then upload the csv file right what we can do is just browse the files from here or we can just drag and drop the csv file right let me drag one of the csv file that i used in the last video also so movie statistics data set csv is uploaded now you can ask me anything related to your data right so i can just ask here how many columns right so it will provide us the columns i'm not going to go all different things now because now this is similar to what we did in our chat with csv video okay that's all for this video it took some time but i hope i explained you each and every step that is what i prefer to instead of making the video of 10 minutes or 5 minutes i want you to know what is happening behind the scenes and in the next video now we are going to deploy the thing that we just created using docker into the google cloud platform thank you for watching and see you in the next video